Yo, what's up? It's what's Team Adventures. So this is another thing that Major Kill put out. We missed it the day of release, but I still mm -hmm. want to go over it because it's dope. I want dope. to dope. G'day, guys and gals. There was a monkey's... G'day, guys and gals. There was a monkey's titload of superhumans in Warhammer 40k. You can't go more than five meters without tripping Is over it. Monkey's titload? A monkey's titload, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'm just going with that's it. A, that's a lot. He's, he's Australian, you know, so yeah, it was just... Yeah. Right. There's actually quite a large variety of different types of superhumans in 40k that use entirely different methods of science to create. Some of these superhuman variants are actually more powerful than a space marine. Whether it be an assassin juiced to the gills on combat stims, an inquisitor with so many biological and mechanical <laughs> augmentations that he can go toe to toe with a greater demon or an especially powerful psyker. There is just a ton of impressive super soldier types that you probably aren't aware of, or at least don't know where their superness comes from. Before we get started, we spend a lot of what? time. Me is what? It's like what? He's wearing glasses. Yeah, what about it? It's just different. Especially eight hours making a video followed by hours of gaming to take a break from said video. It really sends my eyes to the gulag. Ah! I've been using blue light blocking glasses, and nobody does it better than GMG. Other than looking like a less attractive but still bangable Aussie Clark Kent, <laughs> blue light is a special frequency of light that when we are exposed to, yeah. tells us that it's time to be awake. That's because the sun gives off a ton of blue light. Unfortunately, a lot of screens do as well, meaning a 10pm gaming sesh will mess up your circadian rhythm. This yep. is why you often struggle to fall asleep and why you usually look like death. But with the glasses on, no worries. You can literally see it blocking the blue light. This isn't a gimmick. There's plenty of science behind blue light and blocking it. And I personally do feel the difference. I get to sleep way quicker when I'm using these. The pair I'm wearing is the Optimizer because it's my favorite style of glasses. And I reckon it slaps pretty hard. The biggest news is that... Blue light blocking glasses confirmed good for you. Red light therapy confirmed good for you. Mm -hmm. Theory, we're actually plants. <laughs> GMG is currently running a flash sale. <laughs> only for 48 hours via my link below. Oh no. Does that make, us, we'll does that make vegans cannibals? Yes. <laughs> GMG for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over non Astarte superhumans within the setting of 40k, discussing their abilities, how they match up to a space marine, and how you go about creating one. I won't be including the Primux on this video just because I've already covered their creation and source of power in their own video. Let's get into it. <laughs> We will start with the obvious ones you know and love, and then move into the niche, more interesting superhumans deeper into the video to compel you to stay longer. What can yeah. I say? Watch yeah. time. <laughs> what can I say? Watch time makes me moist. The non <laughs> are the custodies. If you've been following me for a while, or you know, you've just got basic common sense, you would know that custodies are dope as hell. I currently have an army of them that I'm painting. I love their lore, and their aesthetic is just awesome. They're also one of the strongest superhumans. Giant banana hats. No thanks. <laughs> All the most powerful of psychers. What makes them so good? Well, first, we have the best like, around. Whilst walk around looking like a banana all day. <laughs> you look like banana. You look like banana. You look like banana. banana. Our armor is made of ceramic. <laughs> made of Aurora Might, which is better in every way. For context, the Emperor used Aurora Might armor, and not all the Primarchs had access to it. Their weapons are obscenely good, and they don't like to share, but good gear will only get you so far. Custodes have their DNA altered on a molecular level when they are young children, meaning they don't get shoved full of organs or crude augmentics like most other superhumans do. As such, a custodian will have the same organs and even proportions as a normal adult male. The difference is that they are just like so much better. For example, you can puncture a custody heart and he still won't die. One custody had Harpy's head and brains blown out and he just kind of walked it off. So whilst having only one heart <laughs> and two lungs might Damn, imagine walking off. Imagine walking off having half your brain blown away. Wow. 
Oh my God. Inferior to space marines who have two hearts and three lungs, the custodial <laughs> organs are yeah, working. That's totally how that works. Extra. What was that? I said, yeah, because that's totally how that works. Weak points. The law hasn't gone into the exact science of how custody is made. However, each one is considered to be a hand. <laughs> The art, oh my god, the art on screen right now is so crisp. Yeah, it's great. But I was also yeah. about to make a joke where I was like, well, you see, when, when you know, when two people love each other very much. I'm just kidding. <laughs> art, which is why <laughs> the superiority over the Astartes. The Emperor viewed every life as an expendable tool except the custodian. <laughs> He genuinely liked them and always avoided sacrificing them, despite the fact that they would all happily jump feet first into hell if he gave the command. The other superhuman wing of the Emperor's private army are the Sisters of Silence, an elite order of blank women who are designed to hunt down psychers and obliterate demons. Blanks are people with a negative soul, meaning it sucks <laughs> to be around them, and psychers feel physical discomfort and struggle to use their powers in their presence. Demons can't even touch them or be near them. Now, some people don't think that the Sisters of Silence are superhuman, just a bunch of elite blanks with good armor. But some people also think putting light bulbs up their rectums is a good idea. <laughs> so the light bulb up the pub. So. Oh. <sighs> idea. So you can tell Why? this people. Yeah. These chicks have been known Why? to kill in melee fights. Their weapon of choice is a big ass greatsword, and their prey of choice is demons and psychers. We have seen elite non superhuman blanks before, and I can tell you with 100% confidence a space marine would delete them in an instant. It's not clear how their superhuman status occurs, but it's likely a more subtle and less warpy version of the custodies process. I mean, they have access to the same level of gear as the custodies, hence why they're able to keep up. Did you know that the precursors to Space Marines, which are the Thunder Warriors, are actually better warriors than Astartes? They are bigger, stronger, and potentially even faster. So why were they replaced with the physically inferior Space Marines? Well, their discipline was trash, and the crude surgery they received to turn them into these superhumans also gave them dementia and cancer. Bit of a rough trade there, buddy. To conquer the stars, yeah. the Emperor needed tactical, intelligent, and long-lived soldiers who could work together and adapt to overcome the various threats the galaxy had to offer. He didn't need juiced-up cavemen who were in a perpetual state of roid rage. Hence, when the Thunder Warriors... <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, most, most things when it comes to, uh, like, getting superpowers in Warhammer 40k is like a would-you-rather game from hell. Yeah. Yeah the custodies the process of turning them into superhumans was done to adults instead of the children that space marines and custodies usually require it wasn't clean and it didn't need to be the armor was basic ceramite power armor i mean the legs weren't even powered so they weren't particularly quick but to underestimate them would be your downfall when the imperium had to track down and kill the few thunder warriors that survived the genocide those warriors would always take down multiple space marines before they were brought down themselves this next one is a little broad, but bear with me. Inquisitors. Pretty much every Inquisitor is a superhuman in some capacity. Whether it be from all the chemical juvenants keeping them beyond their prime for centuries, some augmentics to improve reflexes, vision, strength, or the ability for them to wear advanced power armor, psychic powers that let them enhance their bodies to superhuman capabilities, or a combo of everything. Inquisitors have basically limitless resources, hence they have access to the best superhuman powers that don't require dramatic surgery or the loss of erections. Inquisitor <laughs> Yo, if these superpowers come with not having boners, I don't want it. Right? <laughs> what of Grey Knights from the front and kill a greater demon of corn, Sage of Rax, all thanks to his inquisitorial superhuman abilities. Inquisitor Amberly Vale is crazy good in combat and can even pilot a master crafted power suit that allows her to kill gene stealers in melee combat with ease. No normal human would be able to do that. Inquisitor Eisenhorn has taken out Chaos Space Marines, Dreadnoughts, and other powerful shitheads in melee combat due to the combination of augmentics and his own psychic powers. The dude is so superhuman that he was able to take a high impact slug to the chest from short range and walk it off. Any normal human would have a hole in their chest, but he just kind of copped it due to his status as a superhuman. The point is that whilst there isn't a one-size-fits-all for Inquisitor's superhuman status, 
pretty much all of them enjoy some level of upgrade, although nearly all of them would still struggle to survive an encounter with a space marine. Bioscience, chemicals, and psycho abilities are all cool ways to become a superhuman, but it's important to remember that the flesh is weak. <laughs> and this is why we only prefer <laughs> the Japanese toasters. <laughs> Japanese toasters are not weak, especially when they're the ones <laughs> that you could fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Robot voice just came out of nowhere. I was like, ah! ah! <laughs> it kind of scared me a little bit too. I was like, wait! I was like, ah! 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 mechanical hentai monsters and called pet priests are human, hence fall under the category of superhuman. After all, Belsarius Call can pop open a cow space marine like he's a can of tuna. By replacing their bones, <laughs> skin, and more with mechanical pieces, the servants of Mars enjoy enhanced speed, strength, intelligence, and durability. I mean, some of the fuckers could even just get laser vision if they wanted to. Doesn't get much super than that. In a similar vein to the Inquisitors, all Imperial assassins are superhuman in some way. Beyond all of them being faster, stronger, smarter, and more durable than normal humans due to a variety of subtle augmentics and chemical treatment, each assassin temple takes us another step further. The Kalidus temple can change their appearance down to their gender and even species. The Kalexus temple is full of blanks and is theorized to be the place where powerful male blanks go as they can't join the Sisters of Silence for obvious reasons. The Vindicare snipers <laughs> state of hibernation where their heart beats only once per minute due to their superhuman abilities this is handy when they need to stay in a single spot for weeks or even months until their target reveals themselves the eversur assassins are probably Damn. the most super out of all of them using a shitload of combat stims before a fight which will probably let them outbench an astartes in terminator armor if they die in a drugged up state they will literally explode as they can no longer keep their superness within them all imperial <laughs> assassins have been shown to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Exploded. As they can no longer keep their superness within them. <laughs> that just that just reeks of sexual innuendo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, who could no longer contain his superness. <laughs> the Imperial authorities are not the only ones who come up with creative oh. novels about these superhumans. The black market is another option. As there is such a wide, diverse group of upgrades, ranging from the cheap, crude, chemically enhanced muscles that a lot of gang members pick up, all the way to augmenting all your bones, ligaments, and muscles, so that even a skinny fat tweenie could kick Dwayne Johnson's ass. It gets more creative. <laughs> oh. Planted into flesh, extra dicks, you name it, the black market's got it. <laughs> would be to look at the gangs of Necromunda. Pretty much all of them are enhanced to the status of superhuman in some way. Oh. Despite this, however, none would ever match up to an Astartes. Their enhancements can be impressive, but they are nothing compared to the Emperor's finest. Now for the greatest of superhumans, and the only naturally occurring superhumans other than Psychers, is the Perpetuals. A Perpetual is a human who is born immortal and almost invincible due to just being lucky or the intervention of extremely powerful Xenos. Whilst being a Perpetual doesn't automatically make them a beast, the fact that they live forever allows them to culminate a shitload of knowledge and power. If they are also a psyker, they can't blow up their own bodies from overusing their abilities, so they can push this really hard. Their ability to heal makes them extremely durable. For example, old man Malkador got backhand slapped by Lorga, which sent him flying and broke some of his bones. In response, he got up and he just kind of looked a bit pissed off. That slap would have instantly killed a normal human. Some perpetuals, like the Emperor and Erda, were just automatically very super, but they were special cases. The men of gold can also be considered to be superhuman, but because we know absolutely fuck all about them, and they're probably just perpetuals, I can't really comment. Ironically, despite their immortality and nigh invincibility, they are pretty much extinct. 
Destiny calls the Perpetuals to action and makes them a target, hence one by one they've been annihilated. In saying that, even the weakest Perpetual would be the Space Marine, as they could infinitely regenerate whereas an Astartes can't. Shit like this is why I love Warhammer, literally like 10 unique types of superhumans in the one faction. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a bunch of very artistic and aesthetically drawn boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Not only do I sell porn, memes I you. sell high quality right. porn. Exactly. He's like, it's designer. It's the I'm designer the shit. It's dopamine much gooder. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Major Kill, you wild, bro. Yeah. You wild, bro. Yeah.